All right, it's been forever since I've done one of these. And since I'm packing stuff up for us eventually moving, I thought it'd be fun to look at some figures that have been buried on my shelves for years that I haven't looked at. Now, these are the Gentle Giant Mini Bust Clone Mini Busts. Specifically, this is the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Shock Trooper version from 2006, I believe. These are part of the uh, Deluxe Mini Bust line by Gentle Giant. <coughs> which means that it has alternate arms and hands for alternate poses. Specifically, this guy comes with um, three right hands, one holding a big, long blaster rifle, one holding a regular blaster rifle, um, one doing a thumbs up, pose, and then two left hands, one doing a go that way pose, and one holding the medium blaster. Um, the right arm is not removable, it is stuck in that pose, but any of the hands just drops inside it like so, for a varied variety of poses and display options. Um, put that one back in because that's a cool looking rifle. The left arm is removable and has a mostly extended arm or a similar pose to the right arm. So that you can do um, varying things like let's get the right arms out of the way. Having two guns in it like that, or signaling. Go that direction. And that might make more sense if we put this one back in. The head is removable. It's just on a post loosely, so you can turn it and pose it any which way you want. And when I stick my hand in way of the white balance counter, the lighting changes. Cool. So. That's all there is to the deluxeness of it. The sculpt is really quite nice. Um, it's fairly accurate, as far as I know. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit without making everybody sick. <coughs> Too late. <laughs> I've always really liked this. This is the Phase 2 helmet, clone helmet from Revenge of the Sith. Um, not a great movie, but I really like the clone design, the way it's a halfway match for the Stormtroopers. Oh, sorry about that. Um, this clone is a repaint of one that was released, I believe, earlier that same year in three color schemes. A plain white, which I've already boxed up and don't want to get out again. Um, let's see if I can remember the numbers. I believe there were... Oh, I'm not going to remember. Anyway, they did it in three decos for the original release. Plain white, Darth Vader's 501st clone trooper. Wow, that looks really light. Let's adjust this. And that's a little more closer to what it looks like. And a very poorly color-matched orange version for the Utapao clone trooper that Obi-Wan bossed around. Um, if I recall the numbers correctly, there was a 3 to 1 ratio of the white to the orange, and 2 to 1 for the blue ones. So I think a case was one of these, two of those, and three white ones. Anyway, um, later they also did, in addition to the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, they did an Action Figure Express exclusive version <coughs> that was the Coruscant Clone Trooper, which is mostly white with two gray shoulder pads. Oh, a gray ab section. And the uh, palm dealies. 
And this one also, I believe, might have been the first to have um, a replaceable head instead of the helmet, which I'm pretty sure this is an exact match for the the white version. I don't believe there's anything special about that. But we got our, I believe this was the first version of the Django Fett helm head, Tamora Morrison head. And it's really good, I think. Um, Gentle Giant's faces aren't always great, but I think his turned out quite nicely. And I normally display him like this with the helmet off to the side. <clears throat> Um, what else to say? I probably should have talked more about the sculpt more. You can see the the ribbed undersuit. The this one has an interesting set of bars here on the chest. I hope you can see it there. And also some painted on the tops of his arms that I don't remember other ones having. And detail on the back that should be there. Uh, I don't really know what else to say about it. The sculpt is quite nice. The base is decent. Um, on the bottom it says Star Wars Clone Trooper or whatever edition number you got. The AFX exclusive version, there was only 2,500 of them made, whereas the regular um, original three decos was 10,000? 15,000. So not super limited, actually. And in fact, a recent search on eBay indicates that it's not even worth selling off the two that I no longer care much about, that being the orange and the blue ones, because they're super cheap now. Um, and then the Shock Trooper, being a San Diego exclusive, there were 3,500 of them, which still isn't super limited. Um, in fact, the white one was so common that I commissioned two customs for some clone troopers that I had figures of. This brownish dude, which I believe it was referred to as an engineer on the packaging he was released in. And my favorite one, the, oh, I don't remember the battalion number now. I haven't been into Star Wars for quite some time, actually. But this was the 42nd Battalion, maybe? I don't remember. Anyway, the Purple Troopers are Mace Windu's battalion, and because Samuel Jackson's favorite color was purple, he got a purple lightsaber because George, he asked George Lucas if he could have one. They gave him purple clones, at least in the toys. I don't remember if he had any in the movies. Anyway, this turned out pretty decently, I think. Eh, yeah, it was cheap. It wasn't the most professional of, of commission, of customs, rather, but good enough that I like it. So, I have nothing else to say about these, so I guess that's enough. I still like them. I will be keeping most of them, apparently. I would sell the blue and the orange one, but they don't seem to be worth selling on eBay. So, let's see, they left a little dust there. Thanks for watching.